So a friend of ours recently contacted us about building this storage slash bench to go in her little girl's room to store all of her toys in. Now, I was able to use up a lot of the scrap pieces of plywood that I had lying around by carefully planning and laying out all of the pieces before breaking them down. The reason why I spend so much time sort of laying everything out and kind of overanalyzing how I'm going to cut these pieces out is I want to try to conserve as much material as possible for any future projects and just by taking that extra time to figure out you know what is the best way to cut these out of a sheet of plywood it's it yields so much more material and you're able to save a lot of it whereas if you're just cutting these pieces for what you need and not trying to think about how they fit on a full sheet of plywood you can end up with a lot of waste so after breaking down all the pieces with the track saw to rough size i then like to take everything to the table saw and cut all the pieces down to the same size at once it sort of takes a little extra planning because you have to think ahead about what all pieces need to be the same size. But if you do it this way, it just ensures or prevents, I would say, a lot of error in the end. So this was the first time I got to use the MFT table that I just recently purchased and I used it to break down all the dividers that go in the center all to the same piece. It made it a lot easier cross cutting them on this than it did trying to either put them on a sled or just cut them at the table saw. A, it was easier to handle and B, it was a lot less splintering and tear out. So for the edge banding for the front of the cabinet, I decided to use some pine that I had been sort of kicking around the shop for a while now that sort of had some nasty color stain on it. Uh, this was actually some stuff that was given to me and I figured now would be the best time to try to use that up and sort of get it out of my way. When it came time to attach the edge banding, I used, of course, glue and decided just to brad nail these things on. I sort of cut them a little bit oversized as far as width wise because I knew it would be easier just to come back later after they had dried and flush them up with my compact trim router. For the main joinery on this cabinet, I'm using the Festival Domino. And this is really where sort of a lot of my problems began on this project. I, I sort of learned a hard lesson here. I was trying to use up a lot of scraps, as I said earlier in the video. But the one thing I learned was that using crappy old misshapen plywood and a precision piece of machinery like the Domino doesn't really go hand in hand. and caused me quite a bit of problems some of them you know was my own error from not paying attention to which part of uh, or which end of the board I was referencing the, the mortises off of but another big problem was just the fact that some of these pieces were so misshapen that when I drilled the mortises they didn't line up whenever it come time to actually assemble the cabinet when it was time to attach the back panel, I decided that I would just pre-drill and screw these on because I could just fill the screw holes later being that this was a painted project. The one of the aha moments that I had, or I guess one of the bright moments that I had while building this project was the idea to actually pre-drill and screw these on dry before I glued the top and the bottom on because that would sort of help hold each divider in place so that I could later go back and glue the dominoes in halfway first, just half of each domino glued in, and then finish gluing everything up um, top 
first and then the bottom and it sort of made the glue up go much easier that way because I wasn't trying to glue all of everything at once together and try to fit all these pieces sort of trying to remember where each divider went. I had to do a little bit of finessing to get uh, the top and the bottom lined up even though I I'd had the idea to screw the dividers on first. You still sort of have to get everything lined up. It made it much easier to glue these on one half at a time and I just used the parallel clamps to clamp each one of them down once I had the glue spread. For the base on this cabinet, I just cut some uh, strips of plywood down to I think about two and a quarter inches because they had an overall height that they wanted these things to be. And obviously they had a height or an opening size that they wanted for the front of the cabinet. So to make up for that total height, I decided to make this inset base. It's inset about two inches all the way around and I assembled um, the base for both of these with just a Craig jig. It was simple enough just to do that. And I attached it in the same manner, again, just using the Craig jig because none of this joinery is gonna be seen anyways. And to me, this is where something like pocket screws really shine. I had to do quite a bit of sanding as per usual with most woodworking projects, but I try to not go too overboard because this is getting painted after all. Now, one thing that I used on this project that I use on pretty much every painted project is just regular drywall compound for any sort of imperfections or nail holes or screw holes or anything like that. It works really good because it's, it's easy to spread on there it dries pretty quickly and it sands super easy. I usually spread one coat on before priming it and then I put one coat of primer and afterwards if there's anything else that needs filling like in grain or any sort of little scratches or anything I can go back and do one more small fill with the same drywall filler, sand it and put my two to three coats of paint on just whatever is needed. So even though this project was a bit of a pain in the butt, overall I was really pretty happy with it and the clients were happy with it. So really that's all that matters. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and until next time, happy trails. Thanks for watching.